Now to the legal landscape. Our legal analyst attorney Dan Adams joins us every Monday breaking down the biggest cases happening across Wisconsin and the country. Dan, uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for being here on this uh, Monday morning. Uh, just this past Friday, police announced the tragic end to the months long search for three year old Elijah Vu and two rivers, confirming that human remains found earlier this month belong to Vu. Vu's mom and her boyfriend Jesse Vang have been in jail on child neglect charges since February. Prosecutors say that Vang was the last person to see Elijah alive. So what happens now in this case that it's turned from a missing persons case to a death investigation and could they face additional charges? Sure. Good morning. Well, the uh, first thing uh, first, the forensic pathologists who the state is using is going to analyze uh, that body and do their work uh, to see if they can't determine the cause of death. Uh, you know, after seven months of uh, being in the, the elements, uh, we don't know the state of the body uh, and, and kind of uh, sadly uh, whether or not they're going to be able to determine how young Elijah died uh, within a reasonable degree of scientific certainty. If they can do that, uh, we could expect some additional charges. We're also going to expect the DA uh, and the police to go back over the evidence they already have. Uh, now that they have the scene uh, of where the body was found, go over things like uh, cell tower evidence, uh, GPS from uh, 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 Jesse Vang and Ms. Bauer's phone to see if they can't place them uh, near the scene of where the body was found. DA will evaluate all of that evidence and see whether additional charges are warranted. Uh, that could be uh, upgrading the child neglect from what is charged now to uh, child neglect causing death or even a homicide charge. Uh, I'm sure that's what uh, the DA is looking at. Uh, they can bring this in a new complaint, so a second case, uh, or they can amend the current child neglect case that these two individuals are facing. Yeah, a lot more to come as that death investigation now really gets uh, into full swing after those remains were positively identified last week. I want to ask you about Maxwell Anderson. He's the man accused of killing and dismembering 19-year-old Shadé Robinson on a first date earlier this year. His attorneys were in court last week, and they want uh, to basically separate the arson charge that he's facing from the homicide charge that he's facing and have them both tried separately. The judge denied that defense motion. So what do you make about the judge's decision there? Well, this isn't unusual to bring a motion to sever charges, and really it's not unusual to have that motion denied. Uh, in this case, you have uh, obviously the homicide allegation, which happened uh, on the same uh, evening or early morning hours as the arson. Again, uh, what the state is alleging is that uh, Maxwell Anderson burned uh, Miss Robinson's car in an attempt to cover up for the crime, something like that. Uh, and again, they have video evidence of him near the scene uh, of that arson. And so the state's case, we can presume, is stronger on the arson than the homicide case. And what the defense is saying is, hey, it's going to, you kind of have us, they may be actually conceding uh, that lesser charge uh, and saying it's too prejudicial to have uh, be heard by the jury while we are also. Uh, fighting the the uh, stronger charge of homicide. Why don't you separate this out and give us a fair uh, trial on both? Uh, but that's really not the law. Uh, we presume once something is in the same transaction, and here it again, it's in the same uh, course of action uh, as alleged by the state, going from the homicide to the cover up in the same evening or early morning hours. It's the same transaction, so it should be heard by the same jury, and it's interwoven. Uh, and, and really, we shouldn't have two trials. So this was not a surprising decision by the judge, and he's set for trial uh, coming up in December. And meanwhile, he remains in jail on a $5 million bond. Dan, uh, Dan, it's always great to chat with you. We'll see you next Monday for more of The Legal Landscape.